Everybody, welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We're live right now at the Louis Armstrong House Museum in Corona, Queens with Stefan Rembel. Stefan, it's great to see you again, man. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. Man, this feels good. I'm really glad that we're able to do this uh, during trying circumstances. I'm glad that we're around, be able to be in the same room together and, and doing this. And we're about to hear four of your songs. I'm not sure what's coming up first. Uh, what do you feel like doing? So as we're in the Louis Armstrong house, it makes sense um, for the upcoming shows, which are going to be uh, a focus more on the music of Django Reinhardt. Uh, it, would be, it would make sense to play a song that was... Uh, loved and played by Louis Armstrong and by Django Reinhardt. It's a tune called Dinah. Uh, it's an old standard from New Orleans. So Louis Armstrong loved it and Django recorded it on his first album. So we're going to play it now. Dinah. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, man. That sounds great. And thank you for uh, for tailoring the set list to the location that we're in and playing something that Louis loved. Um, I'm glad that you guys got a chance to hear some of the recordings here of Louis's voice just now, like a minute before we went live. Um, there's a, a ton of a huge archive of stuff that he recorded around this house, around out on tour. And we got a chance to listen to some of it. Um, can you tell me what some of your first impressions are? Have you been to this house before just now? No, it's the first time. Yeah. So what are some of your first impressions? Just feeling the, the vibe of this place and the history of this place? I guess, you know, the bathroom. 
<laughs> it's very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> there was everything golden and all the walls as mirrors and stuff. There is definitely like a, a, a very specific vibe in that bathroom. It's kind of amazing. It's that bathtub and all. It's like <laughs> quite impressive, you know, but you can feel like it's a, I don't know, uh, with the piano and all, there is like a, a very specific vibe and life. You have to come and experience it, you know, it's like really the, the end of it is to come and, and, and feel it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, we're having a good time here. And that one, that piano is, that's Lil Hardin's piano. She was one of, one of Louis' wives um, and that belongs to her. We just got a tune just a couple hours ago, so it's in fighting shape. And dude, this room sounds great. Thank you guys for coming through and, uh, and sharing your music, man. What do you guys want to do second today? So we're going to play one of my composition. It's called Bistro Fada. That's the, um, the main theme for the Woody Allen movie Midnight in Paris. And actually, Midnight in Paris is now on Netflix. It was, uh, I forgot where it was, but I, I don't think it was available for streaming, but now it's available for streaming. So that's a good news. It's a beautiful movie. And also uh, on January 28th, um, Rifkin Festival, the next Woody Allen movie will be released and I actually composed the whole score for that. So there's going to be a, um, a cinema uh, cinema release. I don't know where. I don't. I'm not so sure. But yeah. it's going to be released in the U.S. in the United States for sure on January 28th. So uh, now we're going to play. It's called Bistro Fada um, from the soundtrack of Midnight in Paris. <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Man, so in the case of, of Bistro Fada, was that one, was that an existing song that the film producers or the soundtrack, that, that the film team said, all right, this would fit perfectly and brought it on board? Or did you compose, did you compose that one with Midnight in Paris in mind? Well, I composed it for the movie. And actually it's quite a story because I was uh, sitting in my bedroom practicing in my pajamas. And then suddenly I got a call uh, from Woody Allen's producer saying, hey, we have this new movie about Paris. We cannot release the plot, but we need a theme that would capture the soul of Paris, like a musette wall or something. Is that something you can do? I was like, yes. So I hang up, <laughs> I put record. I was like, uh, I had in mind, like, you know, we have some sort, it's like the blues. The blues is a very specific chord progression. And for the musette, we have also like specific chord progression. So I recorded one um, in E minor and then I started composing the theme right on, you know, I was like, it just came to me. I just like went into a zone and came to me. I recorded it. My bass player came, recorded the bass and then I sent it. So like a few hours later, like by 2 p.m. that day, they had the they had the walls. You know, it was like all done, recorded, composed. It was it just came like that, you know. Sometimes this is what it takes. It takes like, it's like pushing a button, you know, and you get into that zone and the thing comes to you and it's ready to go, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's why we get prepared like that all these years. It's like when something like that happened, it happens, you know? Yeah, your fingers already have the language to, to communicate it to the world. Yeah, and you know, you cannot compose something that you are not. So it has to stay within your, your own self. So it was there dormant, you know, and it just came out at, at, that, came out at that moment. Was that so? How did it work for for the upcoming film? Then did they give you a theme and say, "Give us an entire score based on this theme"? Or are you watching dailies? Like, do you see the movie progress and adjust the music to it, or are they filming based on your music? Or you? I mean, how does how does that work? Are they happening simultaneously, or one than the other? It just depends on the movies. But for this particular one, for Rif Rifkin Festival, it, it's a very uh poetic way of doing it because I went uh, to the studio to meet with. Uh, with Mr. Allen and uh, I, he showed me the first scene, the first 30 seconds. He's like, you see, I need a theme for that. I was like, okay. So I had the same thing, I have an idea coming, you know, of like some tango-ish type of theme. I was like, okay, I think I have like a tango coming to me, like watching that. He's like, okay, I need also a, a more romantic thing and I need a more, th you know, like just come up with something, come back with three or four things and we'll see. <laughs> so I came home and a few days later we met again and i brought like four or five tunes you know and he was like oh I, I, it was funny to be with him he's like oh, it's fantastic i love it i love it <laughs> so it's great for the movie so i just handed him songs and i composed more i sent him some he was like no this i can't use or i said like, oh yeah that's great for that scene so i kind of went with like the feeling of what he wanted but like in a very esoteric way, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was very good, you know, and I saw parts of the movie, you know, where to put some of the waltzes that I wrote and stuff. But for the most part, it's very much like, I tried to like guess his intentions, you know, based on like what I, the few minutes that I've seen of the movie. And it works very well, you know, because it's very spontaneous, it's very artistic, and he put the music on the movie, you know, he did the music editing, so it's all, I don't know, it's very organic like that and very natural, you know. He, once again, you cannot compose something that's not you. So he chose me because he knows, like, I have a way of composing music that fits his movie. So he just let me do and he picked stuff, like, as he wanted, you know. So we knew it would work from, from the beginning anyway. Good, good, man. Well, I'm glad that, that you found a workflow that works consistently and you know i mean it's yeah I've, I've been enjoying what you guys have played so far today and we're only halfway through man there's still two more songs coming up today in this session what do you guys want to do third today the next piece uh is going to be a solo piece it's a very specific uh, repertoire by django reinhardt he he recorded 17 solo pieces which i like to call them preludes uh because django is uh, at heart a classical musician although he swung and improvised on a jazz and all but he's a classical guy at heart, meaning he understood harmony, rhythm, technique. He understood like the structure of music. He always said that he felt the closest, uh, the closest musician to him was Debussy. He feels closer to Debussy, but he loves Bach, Brahms. He talks a lot about Brahms and about uh, uh, Ravel and Fauré. So he has great uh, culture in classical music. And so the pieces that he recorded, they are so Django because 
it's classical music on the guitar, but it's not classical guitar. It's still Django with his knowledge of harmony, what he was playing in jazz and stuff, and he came up with these pieces. I've never heard anything like really quite sounding like that. So for the past five years, I've been like, I spent a lot of time transcribing these pieces. There's 17 of them. Then I recorded a, um, a vinyl, and then like during the, the lockdown, I did um, the transcription. So now there is a book also with those 17 preludes transcribed. I really went through all Django that I could find. Like I went through all the ar archives, like historical archives, everything. So I found 17 of them. And uh, it's a full recital, like a classical recital. It's like an hour 10 recital. And um, so as of now, I'm the only one who knows that repertoire from beginning to end that I know of, you know. So it's a very specific show. We're going we're gonna to play a few dates. Um, in February, I will be uh, at The Cave in Buffalo, New York, and uh, at The Loving Cup in um, Rochester. So we're gonna, I'm going to play that show two nights. And then um, I'm going to be on, in April. I forgot the dates. Uh, it's going to be at the so, uh, Sawdust. Yeah, National Sawdust. Yeah, National yeah, yeah. Sawdust. Sorry, I knew I was supposed to bail you out there, but I, I didn't paste it into my notes. But yes, National Sawdust <laughs> here in Brooklyn. National Sawdust. I know yeah. we moved the show in April, so we're going to play that show in April also. I'm going to play that show because it's a solo show. On the 28th. On the 28th? Yeah, 28th <laughs> of April, when the weather is going to be nice and hot in New York. Yeah. So... <laughs> Um, so I'm going to play the, the first piece that he recorded, that, he is re that I recorded too and that I transcribed, it's called Improvisation Number no. 1. Thank you. 
Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. All right. Man, dude, that sounds great. Thank you again for coming and playing this. And then so shortly after the show that you're talking about on um, on April 28th, uh, excuse me, before that, rather, um, March 3rd, there's the uh, there's the Django Agogo Fest, right? And as far as as far as the world knows and everybody knows, it's, it's happening, right? Maplewood, New Jersey. Can you oh, talk yeah. a little bit about what the festival is all about? I and mean, that's your your thing, right? So that's my big thing every year. Uh, so once a year, uh, I bring some of the greatest players in the world. Like this year, I'm bringing um, for a week, uh, Raphael Face. Raphael Face is a genius of the guitar. He's one of the greatest guitar players I've ever heard, like whoever lived. Um, he came here a few years ago and I was saying that to people I've never heard guitar played like that. And they were like, yeah, you're just talking. And then after like he played and people were coming to see me, they were like, I've never heard guitar played like that. I say, I told you. You just don't want to listen, you know, <laughs> but it's true. That guy is pure genius. Um, in the late 70s, he's very trained in, in, a, in classical and flamenco and classic in a, and Django and everything. He can play everything. And in the late 70s with his dad, he started to play um, uh, a lot of Django, which didn't exist almost anymore. And he started to record and stuff. He's almost... Uh, uh, all by himself, we started the whole Django thing. That guy is like a complete genius. Um, so he's going to be there. And also Sebastian Felix, who is a grandmaster of the Django guitar. Everyone goes to study with him in France. He like, he's like a grandmaster of the, of the instrument and one of the most knowledgeable Django player in the world, one of the greatest virtuoso. So these guys, they like to live like a quiet life, you know, they're hard to get, you know, but I know them. So like, I make sure I get the visas, I get them to come. It's like a long process, you know, but then people here get to see them too, you know, because they're very hard to find, but they are amazing players, incredible guitar players. Uh, Laurent Estin who was my guitar teacher when I was 17. He's a bit like Biri Lagraine, a guy who can play everything. And he plays like for projects in stadiums and stuff, like as like a, a hired guitarist. But he really learned the guitar playing with the Gypsies, with Babi Krenard, um, with Patrick Sosua, like all the old school guys. And he's like an amazing player also. So he's going to be there too. We're going to have Russell Welsh from New Orleans. We're going to have Tommy Davey from, uh, from um, Los Angeles, who's a super virtuoso. And Russell Welsh is one of the, he's, he's been voted the best guitarist in New Orleans by the Time Out New Orleans or Time, whatever, I forgot the name of the magazine. But um, he's an incredible player too. So um, they're going to be there playing. We're going to be there, Daisy Castro on violin, uh, Aurora Nilan on saxophone. We're going to have like a whole bunch of musicians. And for the whole week, we do a concert series in Maplewood, New Jersey. Uh, we do three nights, uh, it's three concerts. And then the final concert is on the Saturday night, March 5th. It's going to be at Town Hall. Town Hall in New York City is one of the greatest hall probably in the world. Um, it was been in the 20s for specific, with specific acoustic for, to enhance classical music performance. And it's an amazing hall. It's 1500 seats. It's quite a big hall. And uh, we're going to be there on Saturday night. The whole of us, uh, all of us are going to be playing. It's going to be a fantastic show. That's going to be March 5th. And during the whole week, we're going to be playing and all. There is a guitar camp. So I have 30 students and we do three group of 10 and uh, everyone learn with everyone. All day long, there is like lessons, classes, workshops. It's like an amazing thing, you know, um, with all these masters from Europe. So it's very, they're very hard to get. It's a very rare moment. It's a very uh, unique moment in time to do that. So all day long, there is classes. Then we have the concerts and then we go in the, in the restaurants, pubs everywhere in Maplewood, New Jersey. And then we jam and all, all night long. It's amazing. It's called Django Agogo. That's the first week of March. So yes, it's happening. And it's going to be fantastic. That's that I, I put like a whole year of work in it. Every year I, I put a lot of love, a lot of um, I believe in it, you know, because I'm a musician. I'm not a promoter. So I know exactly which person to put together to produce the shows. And I know exactly all that, you know, and I know like how to put together these shows and they're going to be amazing. And the classes are going to be amazing. It's just going to be 
amazing so a lot of uh, a lot of love in that project and yeah. it's happening for sure good good man well good for you thank you for for bringing that uh, again this year to J uh, Django a go go I mean the the interactive the education the hang out and have drinks watch the show and that whole thing sounds sounds tremendous man congratulations to you it's for so putting alive. it on yeah yeah that's uh man thank you again for coming and we're still we're not finished yet man there's still one more song coming up today what do you want to do fourth today one more song um, we're going to play Ochichonia, Dark Eyes, Les Yeux Noirs. It's like a, it's a, tra it's a traditional gypsy song from Russia, but it's kind of like the gypsy and them. And in a way, I like to think of it as an ode to travel and a, a nomadic type of life. You know, as musicians, we live that kind of nomadic type of thing. We love to be in the car and you know, stopping in the gas station and getting some snacks <laughs> that's <laughs> part of the whole thing <laughs> no but we love that uh, that uh, travel and the, the whole the whole nomadic feeling of being on the road i feel like when we are like on the road we go faster than the devil or something you know like we're on the move and uh, we're going to be in california actually uh next week playing a series of shows in san diego los angeles santa cruz so um, Berkeley, so uh, everything is on my website, on my Facebook page, and also you can check it out. But we're gonna play Dark Eyes, the Gypsy and them. <laughs>
Stefan, thank you for doing this. Ari, thank you. Josh, thank you, man. You guys sound great together. And um, yeah, we could have asked for no better setting to do this, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for it's changing incredible. the song it's, selection. There's such a vibe in here. The sound has, there is, a, there is a quality in the silence in this room. You know, it's very often there is in, in places, wherever you go, in a city, in a village, in a street, in, in a house, there is always a silent quality that no one pays attention to. But the silence is always very important. If you learn to listen to the, the, the surrounding silence, every place has a soul with its own silence. And this place definitely has like a great thing happening. There is a vibe here for sure. There is, and there. So this place is is inviting contemporary artists to apply for. There's two ten thousand dollar awards that they're uh, that they're offering for artists to come in, experience the archives, and um, and create new works based on the Louis Armstrong House archives. So that whole application process is open right now. So go check. We'll drop a link into the comments section. But uh, yeah, man, two artists in residence to create new stuff and interpret their experience here. So it's a lot happening here. And thank you for adding to what's happening, man. We really appreciate it very much. Thank you and i just would like to say um very often i forgot to say something about the guitar camp of django agogo is very often i hear that people are they're like oh, i'm not good enough or i'm not this and no we just come to the camp that it's open to everyone there is no like really distinction of levels we have more advanced student less advanced student but we always organize the group to balance them and everyone is with people of the same level and everyone is going to learn something and that's a unique moment to 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 experience you know so i really encourage everyone to not be afraid or be shy or anything and to join us we still have a few camps left so it would be great to have like all 30 people and for everyone who is like interested to just join and just just do it you know because it's really a beautiful thing Nice, man. Well, thank you for bringing that music to uh, to the Django Agogo camp and travel safely uh, in, Cal in California. Travel safely for all your upcoming tour dates. And thanks again, man, for doing this today. Thank you. Bye. All right, we'll see you next time. And that's it, man. We did it. Thank you. Yeah, man.